What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast version of this episode, which someone informed me in the comments, this isn't technically a podcast, it's just a really rough cut of my regular weekly videos. But that the, whatever you wanna call it, welcome to the extended version of this week's video. I'm talking about passive income today and just kind of like a look behind the scenes a little bit on why I haven't been speaking about passive income so much recently is because um, I started getting some comments on my prior passive income videos, basically, offering negative feedback. And I know that's just maybe, it might not be everyone who feels that way, but at least some people in the comments are sharing that, you know, it feels like inaccessible, unrelatable, or that somehow I'm, I'm like advocating that every therapist should become like an online influencer, whatever that means. And that's not what I mean at all. Um, so I think I sort of shied away from that content. And I also have started to realize that generating passive income, and I mean like, I'm talking about large scale passive income, like six figures plus per year, not like the side hustle that generates a few extra hundred dollars a month, that that kind of scale of passive income is probably not for most people. So I'm kind of not speaking directly to most people watching and listening to my content when I'm talking about passive income. So I'm spacing it out a bit more, but I thought it would be helpful to make this video today, this podcast to speak about what it really entails to generate passive income, like big numbers passive income with the six figures at the end if you want to, the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, the ugly, and also a little bit about what type of person I think could be a good fit for generating full-time income from passive income. So let's get into it in this video. Let me maybe burst your bubble. There is no such thing as completely 100% passive income, meaning you do zero work and you just earn income. There are some things that start to approach passive income. At the extreme, you could say if you have a trust fund that you inherited from somebody else and you're just living off of the passive dividends of that trust fund, you have done zero work to earn the income that you're earning, you're still earning that income from someone's work somewhere in history. So when I think of passive income, I am really talking about a situation where work that you're doing earlier on is getting continued payoffs as time unfolds. It might be that in your sleep you're earning income, but it's based on work that you did at a different time. But make no mistake about it, there is still work involved and often a lot of work. So there's no such thing as passive income. There's no like magic money leprechaun that just like generates passive income that comes off trees. I don't know. <laughs> so let's keep that in mind here. I found this New York Times article about passive income quite helpful. It really does a good job of painting the picture of what most people's experiences of trying to generate passive income really is like. Here's a quote from that article. There's much confusion about what qualifies as passive income. What people often call quote, passive income is income that isn't dependent on a single paycheck or employer, said Kevin J. Brady, a vice president at Wealthspire Advisors in New York City. In some cases, without understanding the difference, people are talking about leveraged income, putting in time and effort in advance to earn recurring profits from selling, say, an online course or ebook, or additional revenue from a side hustle. That is, more work. This article is just highlighting what I'm getting at. I'm using this term passive income to refer to what this article refers to as leveraged income. But if I titled this video, what it's really like to earn leveraged income, people would say, what the heck is that? I have no idea what you're talking about. So when I'm using the term passive income, it's a little bit tongue in cheek because most people are talking about leveraged income when they talk about passive income. Are you tracking? <laughs> so to clear the air, this video is really about leveraged income, meaning you're generating income from work that you did before rather than work that you're doing right now. For example, if you were to quit your job today, most likely you'd stop getting a paycheck. If I were to quit my job today, I would still be getting income for quite some time. I might even be able to keep generating six figures for another year or two without touching anything. I'm always helped by real life examples of what someone's talking about when they're talking about things like passive income, AKA leveraged income. So I'll tell you a little bit about where I'm at with my business, private practice skills, and my whole income situation. I started private practice skills back in 
July of 2018, which feels like a thousand years ago. And I'm gonna give a brief summary of the kind of income timeline of private practice skills because I have spoken about it at length in some prior videos. I'll link to those below if you're interested in hearing all the nitty gritty details. But to sum up, my business plan was that for the first year, I would make zero income. I would just grind making a ton of content, waiting to reap the benefits later. I spent about 20 to 40 hours a week making content for private practice skills, and I didn't receive my first bit of income until August of 2019, exactly one year later. And my initial plan was by the second year, I would generate just a little bit of income, not enough to like quit another job over, but just something a little bit. And the goal for my third year was to break into six figures of revenue just from private practice skills alone. So let's look at the revenue that I actually generated in my years of doing private practice skills. In 2019, I generated $6,280 of revenue. In 2020, I generated $27,361 of revenue, which is kind of like my second and a half-ish year of private practice skills. And in 2021, I broke six figures my third full year of private practice skills, and I generated $105,000 of revenue. In 2022, I generated $112,000 of revenue. And now as of July, 2023, I've generated $86,000 of revenue for private practice skills. So definitely on track to still break six figures for the year. And just to kind of give you a full picture of what my income looks like right now, I spend Mondays working on private practice skills and Wednesdays I see therapy clients in my private practice, which currently is generating somewhere around $3,000 or $4,000 of revenue per month, depending on how slow of a month that is. So if you just look at my income right now for 2023, we're going to be bumping into the multiple six figure land for my total income between both businesses working part time. It might sound very sweet <laughs> and it is. It's the best. I love it. There's kind of two major myths I'll say that I'd like to debunk in this video that are often perpetuated about passive income, aka leveraged income. On the one hand, a lot of folks talk about just how easy it is to generate passive income, and I'd like to debunk that myth because you do have to really put in a lot of work, especially at the beginning, especially when you don't know if this business is gonna work, and especially when you don't have any income coming in from your work at all. In my case, a full year of zero dollars and 20 to 40 hours a week of work on the side of my full-time work seeing therapy clients at the time. I'm gonna share a little bit more detail in a second about what that work entailed at the beginning, but suffice it to say for now, generally speaking, if you're wanting to generate big numbers of passive income, you're going to have to work a lot, especially in the beginning. Now, I think that part probably isn't so surprising. There's a lot of folks on the internet saying how easy it is to generate passive income and it's kind of like okay is there a gimmick here are you selling me something trying to tell me it's so easy when it's not actually or yeah so I think a lot of us can get on board with this idea that it takes a lot more work to generate passive income than some people seem to advocate but on the flip side I also hear a lot of folks who say that no matter how far into it you are it's always going to be a grind to keep generating passive income and though absolutely you could continue the grind in order to keep generating passive income. From my personal, purely anecdotal experience, I'm hardly working right now, and I am genuinely just in maintenance mode, holding steady at about the same income that I've generated maybe increasing it slightly from year to year as I continue to work less and less and less each year. And I just focus on doing stuff that I want to do rather than focusing on like trying to multiply my passive income. That part feels important to emphasize too, because I think in a lot of circles where folks are talking about growing a business through passive income, there also can be a heavy emphasis on continuing to grow, continuing to multiply your business. A lot of folks who are pitching courses to people in my position are saying, you know, how to grow your side hustle from six figures to seven figures. And I hear that and I think like, I believe that I could grow this business to seven figures, but I don't need seven figures. And if I have to keep hustling to get to seven figures a year versus just working a little bit and maintaining my six figure income, I'm gonna choose the working a little bit and maintaining six figures. So it just kind of depends on what your end goal is. If you are trying to create like this empire of seven figures and beyond, 
yeah, you're probably gonna have to keep grinding quite a bit to generate that level of passive income. But most people don't need seven figures, I would argue, in order to maintain a joyful life even in expensive pockets of the world. I mean, if you're like me, most of us would be happy to just increase our income by 50%, let's say. For most of us, that's enough to kind of go from, oof, I wish I could have a little bit more money to save each month to, cool, I'm saving my money, I'm investing it, and I can take a vacation. Like maybe your dream is to go from $80,000 a year to, you know, $120,000 a year. That would be sweet. <laughs> That would be sweet. So I think it's possible that in a lot of the circles where folks are saying it's a grind no matter how far into it you are, might not necessarily be speaking to the person who just wants to increase their income like by 50% rather than multiplying their income by 10 times, for example. The next piece that I'd like to emphasize in this video is that most people who end up having success with passive income go through several failed business attempts before they arrive at the one that's successful. And I am no exception to that. While I was scripting this video, I was reflecting on my different business attempts before this one. And at first I thought, oh yeah, it's like a small handful of attempts, you know, like three to five, um, which if I reflect on online business ideas that I attempted. It is something like three-ish ideas that I really, really invested in for a brief period of time. And then they flopped because, uh, you know, my approach was all wrong or just like I wasn't excited enough by them to keep doing 20 to 40 hours a week of investment with no pay for a while. So I just kind of gave up on them. But I actually had many businesses, they just weren't all online. My first businesses weren't passive income idea businesses, but just I've started a lot of businesses over the years, since 2009. Like it might be closer to like eight businesses that I've started since 2009. And yeah, the only ones that I'm currently investing in are my therapy practice and private practice skills. I got two <laughs> out of all these that I've tried. And I think even that is probably a relatively high success rate compared to the average. But this seems worth acknowledging because I have invested in businesses along the way. I've learned what it feels like to invest and fail and then invest in a new one again and fail and do it over and over again, improving just a little bit every time until you finally hit that successful formula that fits what people need and also what jives with your own personality and all of that. I feel like it's really important to name that because I am imagining that there's at least some people who say like, okay, I'm gonna make this passive income thing like Marie or whoever and you give it a try and it doesn't work out for whatever reasons and go up. Oh, I guess it's not for me. And the reality is it might take you several more attempts in order to land on the thing that is for you. So just keep that in mind if this is something you're pursuing. Okay, so a piece that I'd like to look a little bit more closely at when it comes to generating passive income is just how much of a grind it tends to be in those early days before you even see a dime generated from it. And so in order to do so, I thought it might be helpful to look at the analytics of some of my content in the early days. I have prior videos where I shared a bit about my strategy for how I kind of got things off the ground with private practice skills in that first year. But to sum up, I've leaned since day one heavily in posting at least one weekly video to YouTube. That's where I started. And then in time, I also built my own website where I posted weekly blogs that were leaning heavily into SEO in order to be found online. And I also started sending weekly emails to folks who were on my email newsletter. And that was my main marketing strategy at the beginning. I also posted to Instagram, but that kind of felt like a side fun thing. I don't know that that moved the needle that much for my business in the beginning. Okay, so just to give folks a little taste of the reality of what it's like starting out, let's look at the first six months of my YouTube analytics. I created the private practice skills username for YouTube on July 26, 2018, but I posted my first video on August 3rd, 2018. I posted for months and got close to zero views. And each of these videos I was spending five to 10 hours working on. It was a steep learning curve because there, I was learning a whole lot of stuff about making videos that now is a lot more streamlined and I don't have to spend as much time on. So that's something else to factor in. You have to learn a whole bunch of new skills typically in order to launch something. And I had to kind of learn as I went, it took a ton of time. And meanwhile, the payoff is like on any given day, I'd have zero views for a while or sometimes it would 
would bump up into like five views. It wasn't until December 2018 that my view count started kind of creeping upwards a little bit. And even then we're talking small numbers. Like it's not like I posted a viral video and I got like thousands of views all of a sudden. It's like I've been posting weekly now for at least four months and I'm finally starting to get what sometimes 50 views a day, which is so small in YouTube land. So it takes a lot of work to even get any traction, let alone big traction. And even still, if we zoom out a little further on my lifetime view count, it wasn't until the beginning of the pandemic, honestly, uh, March 2020, that things really started picking up. So at this point, I'm more than a year and a half into making at least weekly videos. I think at that point I might have been producing six monthly videos, but um, it was kind of a fluke that I had a video that was sort of quote viral for me, meaning compared to my usual average, I had a video that got way more views and it was because of the pandemic. And I started posting in real time how I was making adjustments for my practice in order to adjust for the pandemic and people were searching for that. I just kind of hit it at the right time and a lot of people discovered me then. Um, so luck is also a variable that's really important to acknowledge, but it takes dedicating yourself to something to, for a really long time and trusting that eventually you might get lucky, hopefully, in order to eventually like get somewhere. And similarly, if you go back and look at my website traffic early on, I was posting a whole bunch every week with no traction for quite some time. Now I touched on something a moment ago that I want to emphasize in this video also, and that's that starting your own kind of online creator business is just not a great fit for a lot of people. So it's really important to ask if your personality is a good fit for what you're setting out to do. Unless you have a history of launching a business like this before that's generating leveraged income through some kind of online content creation and you know what you're doing, most likely if you're setting out to do this for the first time, you're going to have to learn how to do a bunch of stuff or you're gonna have to have funds already to pay someone to do a bunch of stuff for you. One way or the other, a lot of us don't have the funds at hand in order to pay someone to do this stuff for us, or we end up in debt and taking way too long to recoup that debt, or we have to spend a lot of time learning stuff. And I went that route. I spent a lot of time learning stuff. I promised myself I wouldn't spend any money on the business until I actually made money, except like I bought a domain name. It was like uh, some very, very like under $100 a year amount of money that I spent on the business. So practically for me, that looked like spending many hours a week watching YouTube videos, reading blogs, trying stuff, breaking my website, messing up Final Cut Pro again, and having to start a video from scratch like filming a video and messing up the audio and then only finding out after I've uploaded it to my computer and having to then go back and do the whole thing again. Like that whole learning curve is a heavy investment. And for most of us, somewhere in the process of starting an online business like this is gonna have some skills that we just don't have yet and we're going to have to learn again or pay someone to do for us. I mean, just a snapshot of some of the stuff that I really spent like 10 plus hours a week learning in the beginning was things like video editing, stuff like improving the quality of like recording your videos, the audio, stuff like SEO, hardcore. I was learning about YouTube SEO. I was learning about website SEO. How do you get your stuff to show up in search results? I was taking free courses about it. SEMrush have some really great free courses about SEO. I'll link to those below, but they're all like deep dive things, like stuff that most people are not really interested in learning, but I find that really, really engaging. I am the kind of personality that is a constant learner. So if I feel like I've mastered something, I'm going to start searching for something new to learn about just because I love the challenge of saying like I have no idea how to do that thing but I would love to figure it out and it tends to be really challenging to have to go like I have no idea what this thing Final Cut Pro is but I'm gonna watch a bunch of tutorials try it myself mess it up try it again watch more tutorials try again mess it up until eventually I kind of cobble together something that works if your personality isn't the type that enjoys taking on learning challenges like that 
then it may not be a good fit for you to pursue this. Again, unless you have the funds to pay somebody else to, you know, <laughs> film your videos, edit your videos and all that kind of thing, or it doesn't have to be video, but it could be your blogs. You have to have some marketing strategy of getting yourself out there to people. I also spent a really long time learning about email marketing and that has paid off so much. Out of all of my income streams, email marketing is my biggest revenue generating stream and I only rarely sprinkle affiliate links or sales in my emails, but that winds up being so much of my income and learning how to generate a large email list and serving them well was something that I spent a lot of time learning about in those early days and was well worth it, but a skill that I did not have. So anyway, to sum up, your personality really has to be a good fit for learning new things and investing heavily into that challenging learning curve and enjoy that challenge again or you have to have enough money to pay someone to do that stuff for you from my perspective if it's not intrinsically rewarding for you to go through the like 20 to 40 hours a week of like learning stuff and generating content with no reward for some amount of time then my best guess is that it's quite likely that you're going to burn out before you get even close to generating the kind of income that you were hoping to from your passive income endeavor. Now, as I'm getting towards the end of this video, I'm aware that it might sound like I am like, I don't know, complaining or saying that I think passive income is a bad idea. And genuinely, I love my job. I wake up every morning feeling so fortunate that I get to do this and get paid for it. Like I can't describe how much I enjoy this. But it's also really important to note that I did enjoy those early days. Like I loved getting home at like 7 p.m. from seeing therapy clients and then cracking open my laptop to write a blog post or edit a video until 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight. That was fun for me. Like it was a fun challenge. And that feels really important to emphasize as well. So the point of this video isn't to bash online businesses like mine or to say that you shouldn't pursue it. I'm just hoping to offer more realistic expectations than a lot of what I see represented out there of what it entails to start a business like this and if it's a good fit for you, I hope that you feel empowered to give it a try, knowing what you're getting yourself into. Say like, mm, it's gonna take me a minute before I generate the kind of revenue that I want, so let me create a timeline of work that is intrinsically fun for me to do in the meantime while I get to that point. So if it's not clear yet, let me make very clear that there's no such thing as a get rich quick scheme or even get a little bit of money quick scheme generally. It takes a lot of work. And so if your whole end goal in starting a in passive income business is to generate a whole lot of income, but you don't have other interests in building that business at all, it's quite unlikely that you'll be successful. It also feels really important to note that by the time I started Private Practice Skills, I was already doing financially fine. Like I'd started other businesses when I felt like I was kind of financially on the edge and I needed to generate that additional income. But by the time I started Private Practice Skills, I didn't need to generate extra income. I was working in private practice, seeing cash pay clients, 15 to maybe 22, 23 clients a week and earning good income. And by that time, my spouse was also generating really decent income. So together we were fine. We were stable. I was just looking to build on what I already had to see if it's possible to scale back on how much one-to-one -one therapy work I needed to do in order to earn the same income. It feels important to emphasize that piece because I know that that was a position of privilege that I was in to just build on success that was already there rather than being in a space of scarcity and a lack of margin and trying to still muster up energy from fumes to create a business on the side of everything else. That would have been really difficult. Not impossible, but, but just I had some things working in my favor that kind of helped position me to be successful and that feels important to acknowledge. Now, if you clicked on this video because your main motivator was to just kind of increase your income quickly and I burst your bubble, sorry, <laughs> but also it is possible to increase your income through other ways, probably faster than trying to increase it through passive income. For most people, the easiest way to increase their income is to either get promoted at their job, change jobs, or if you're in private practice, then doing things like increasing your rate or coming off insurance panels, things like that. There are much faster ways to increase your income very soon, maybe not by 10 times, but in a reasonable incremental manner by just kind of changing your career path even slightly. It can make a big difference. And if on top of that, you invest in budgeting and investing your money wisely when you have money to save, 
That is probably the most effective way for people to reach their financial goals. I think I have a video all about how to build wealth as a therapist, so if I can find it, I'll link to it below. Well, hopefully this video brought us all back to planet Earth and acknowledging that there is no true passive income. Like I said, even things like dividends from stocks, someone had to work somewhere to invest that money to get the dividends. So work is involved in making income no matter how you slice it. So hopefully this helps you manage your expectations about passive income and make more informed decisions about what you'd like to do with your career. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below if there's any concerns you have about generating passive income or lessons you've learned if you are generating passive income. It'll help other folks glean from your experience and also if I hear some what some of your concerns are, I can address them in a future video. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well.